Hey, welcome to part one of a couple of videos where I incorporate some marquetry and some inlay into a walnut sideboard. It was a super fun, interesting, yet challenging project for me. Let me show you more. All right, fantastic progress on my veneered panels. So these are like sheets now. So this is just like a simple book match, right? So that's just two pieces per, per sheet. And these are actually four separate pieces. And so let's see, one, six, seven, eight. Let's see how this goes, one, three, four, like, yeah, like that. So four separate pieces, another four separate pieces. These are book matched, book matched, book matched. And the two pieces where they come together are also book matched. So everything is very symmetrical, matching. It's one of the many reasons I love veneer. Couldn't do this with solid wood. You can see these little pin knots and they will go all the way across these doors. Everything looks harmonious and well balanced. And even where these two doors come together, that, that's going to match. Before we get going, let me grab some sample pieces and show you the process of the double bevel marquetry technique. All right, so here's my scroll saw. This is an Excalibur scroll saw. It's got about a 30 inch reach. In other words, from the blade to back there, that would be a large motif marquetry panel. And so the only challenge would be is moving your body out of the way as you swing it around to make the cut. Now to start a blade in a hole, you simply drill it. This is called a pin vise, so this part swivels. There's a drill bit in here. This is a number 69 jobber drill bit, very tiny. And it's drilled at an angle. So you basically maintain vertical as you drill through. We'll talk more about the angle here in a bit. Feed the blade through and tighten it up with this knob here. And then this is the tensioner. Incidentally, I've done a few modifications to this scroll saw, so you can see as I lift this up, this just floats, nothing holds it up. So I ended up putting this little arm with a mag magnet. This has a magnet that holds that out of the way. There's a little tab I can easily reach with each hand, with either hand, I should say. And with that, I can hold that up out of the way while I feed this in place or change a blade or whatever. That'll drop down. Knob tightens the blade. And this is the tensioner. Boom, that's ready to go. This is the original air nozzle, but it originally fed off the motor and it was very weak. And I've since added a valve and I have it hooked up to air. And with that, I can have all the air I need. I'm gonna leave that off for the video. It can get a little bit of annoying. And then of course the light, uh, I'm gonna leave that off as well because it jacks with the camera. And then the angle for this thickness of veneer this is 1 16th of an inch thick veneer. This is a 10 and a half degree angle. I also have a foot pedal down below. So I've got my speed set, which is actually turned down pretty low. Let's go ahead and make a cut. Sometimes if I have a really intricate cut, and I'm trying to hold that down. So sometimes I'll use this bent piece of Formica that had a hole in it and I can put that right around the blade and easily control as I make those cuts. Oops, that footage didn't work, but I think you get my point. Yeah. And that's it. Release the tension, release the blade. This drops down, this comes out. That is fall off. This is my background. Let's remove that. Here's the insert piece. Comes in from the back side. Of course, this would get glue. Boom. <laughs> That's how you do it. So there you have it. By cutting through both veneers at the same time at a specific angle that's related to this thickness, we get a beautiful tight fit. Once that gets glue, you can put it in place and immediately start cutting even right next to it. Fantastic. I absolutely love the double bevel marquetry technique. 
So it's a mathematical relationship, really, between the thickness of the veneer, the size of the blade, and the angle of the table. Makes sense, yeah? So those are the two veneered sections that we'll be getting the marquetry. Here we go. All right, so what I've got going here is, uh, this is a, a, a piece of blueprint paper, actually the back of blueprint paper. I just needed some, you know, some drawing area. And what I've got going is I'm laying out the marquetry that's gonna go on these two doors. So this is the depiction of the two doors. This is the, the bottom rail, and of course the styles where the two doors go together. This is laid out full scale. So this is gonna, the size that it's gonna be. And this vase, this was just laid out with some simple math. You can see some lines. So I just created some radiuses. I wanted that cut at an angle uh, just to add something and also to give it a way to lean these over so they can flow into this other part of the door instead of just being on one door. And so they're going to, they're going to end up going across this door. Uh, this is going to be marquetry. This is going to have to be inlay as this goes right across the uh, styles of the door. I want this marquetry really simple and basic. It's going to be darker. So this is going to be walnut and this is going to be wenge. So it's just going to be a silhouette. No sand shading, hardly any de no, you know, no detail, just cut out. Uh, the leaves will just be one piece. Uh, very simple and basic. So uh, I think it's going to look beautiful. It's going to really have uh, some nice contrast but not too crazy with the with those two darker woods. What I wanted to show you is these arcs of these stems, I guess you'd call them. So these are going to taper from, I don't know, maybe a few millimeters down to, you know, smaller, 330 seconds down to the 16th or whatever. And I'm making it, this was all done freehand, right? It's just pretty simple. And I'm making those arcs by pivoting using my elbow as a pivot point. So I can put my elbow here and make that arc. If I need something like a, a smaller radius, rather than trying to just freehand that, you end up going crooked. I'll put something down like my tape measure and I'll make the, I'll change the pivot point to a, sh a shorter radius. So instead of going off my elbow, I'm like halfway up my arm or whatever to make a sharper curve, shorter radius. With a full-size drawing in place, and you can see those two pieces of wood at the top, those are just a reference. I can butt the walnut background veneer to those, and it's gonna be in the same place, at least sideways, each and every time. Now, I can transfer all my measurements to the background veneers. So, I've made a tracing of the vase. So I've got this face drawn here, and that goes about right there, close enough for now. My veneer, the background veneer for these doors is gonna go here. I've temporarily taped this piece so I can index this against that. And then left to right, that goes right there. I have a little mark, boom, that goes there, bam. So now I know that my vase is gonna go there. I'm trying to find a piece of dark wenge that will look pr proper for this darker area of the vase in here, and this will be it. So I can put that there. Of course, this piece, once I get it located, actually needs to be on the other side of this walnut to become an insert piece as I do the double bevel marquetry. So a lot of trickery going on here, but, um, well, tri tricky for me anyway, but I'm gonna figure it out and it's gonna look spectacular. Now, it may be obvious, but the reason I'm using a scroll saw instead of a fret saw is because the fret saw has a limit of about 11 or 12 inches. This 11 or 12 inches is the depth of the frame on the saw, so I had to use a scroll saw for the entire project. And of course here, just gluing in the first piece. It always feels amazing to get the first piece in. And so yeah, that's the inside of the vase up at the top. And essentially, when you start a marquetry pattern or motif, you're starting with the pieces that are furthest away from the viewer, right? So here I got that little piece inside the vase and I can do all the stems. And then the main part of the vase will go in last because that's closest. So it gives you a kind of a, an area that is a wild area that will get cut out later by all the subsequent pieces that are closest to the viewer. Hope that makes sense.
So with a compass, a large compass, I can take the radius that's close to the drawing and make a nice, beautiful, and accurate arc to follow with the scroll saw. And here I'm taping the piece on the back, like always, and also lining up the grain. All right, so there's that little piece cut, and that little sliver is actually walnut background. You can see how small it is. And I'll remove the tape, remove the insert piece of veneer, Of course, that's a little stem that goes in, and I'll slip that in place. Well, I'll slip it in place with glue, of course, right? Man, I love this process. Once I get going, uh, on a good day, I can get about 25 to 30 pieces an hour glued in place. So it goes pretty quick. And here's just some progress photos, stems, leaves. And here, you should be able to pick out the insert wenge piece, the background walnut, veneer, the insert wenge veneer and the waste walnut piece. All right, same thing. Here we go, putting a piece in. I like the grain. I mark it on top, slip that piece behind there, line up the marks, tape it in place. So literally at this point, it's lather, rinse, repeat. Just repeating this process over and over, getting all the pieces in. And I believe here, this was the last leaf going in. I love wenge. It's a very dynamic species. The grain works fantastic for leaves. It also works really good for feathers on a bird, right? Okay, here, let me get this camera set up. So here I've transferred the radius of that vase so that I can draw that and have really nice, precise, accurate lines on the background veneer. All right, so continuing on, this is probably middle school geometry. I know the radius, but I need to connect the points from the top of that vase to the side of the vase to create the neck of the vase. So I'll just add some tape here so I don't make a hole in the background veneer, which may or probably wouldn't show up later, but just in case. And I can strike an arc. And then going off near the neck or near the base of the neck, I can strike another arc, line up those two points as my pivot point, And now I have a nice, crisp, sharp line to follow. Now, it is typical to draw the complete background when you're doing double bevel mark tree, but I don't always do it because a lot of times the lines can get smudged. And so I might do it as I go, as I'm doing here. Now, here's a good little tip that you can do when you're doing something like this. I don't know what those, I don't know what the length of those radiuses are. So I just do a little scale and write them all down. There's five different radiuses and I need to know what they are just in case I need to redo them. Awesome. So I got one piece left. This is the vase. And you'll notice that this piece of wenge is very curvilinear. That is to lend to the physical roundness of a vase. And finally, I can run these through the drum sander. I start with the back, getting everything nice and flush. My drum sander can go down to about a sixteenth of an inch without a platen. Works very well. And boom. <laughs> There's our motif. I am loving the way this looks. It was a long time getting to this point. And here I'm just making sure that I have a 3 30 seconds reveal perfectly all the way around the panel. I don't have to worry about expansion or contraction because this is not solid wood. That's one of the beauties of using veneer. As a matter of fact, I glued that panel in solid, which added strength. At this stage, the doors are probably just about right, maybe a tad big. I've added hinges. You can see the sauce hinges there on the sides. Now, my next focus will be getting the two stems to connect with inlay going across the two door styles and that little half leaf up at the top. That'll happen in part two.